And thank God it is Friday. Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Actually happened today. Today's Friday. And, We've been uh, thanking God it was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Now it's Friday. It's Friday and we've been having a wonderful time. Yes. And uh, so uh, we're studying your identification with Christ and who you are in Christ. And uh, our free book is all you have to do to go to markhankins.org. Go to our website, markhankins.org. And the free book this week is The Power of Identification with Christ. That's who you are in Christ and your identity, who you are, what you have because of your identification with Christ. So you need to get the free book, and many of you already have. And so just go to the website. It's the easiest way to order. If you don't want to do it that way, you can call the office, 318-767-2001. And so the book is free. While you're there at markhankins.org, you can download uh, the CD messages, unlimited uh, free uh, digital download so you can get all the messages that are on CD and just download them absolutely free so you can spend time feeding on the Word of God and we know that he sent his word yes and it healed them and delivered them from their destructions so this is really a Bible school and uh, we're studying the word and so maybe a little different than just you know having a church service for those that you are a disciple a student and more serious you want to study the word and that's what these uh, sessions are all about, this teaching's all about. Yeah. And we're studying your identification with Christ. And so the way you receive the word will determine its effect upon you. Amen. And uh, how you hear the word, how you receive it, and then th when you act upon the word of God. Amen. Hearing, receiving, and then acting upon it. Yeah. It makes it <clears throat> vital and it works in our life. It brings it forward yeah. and we Go from one level to a new level. And the psalmist David said, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. It literally is the new covenant, the blood covenant, through the blood of Jesus. And uh, every scripture has blood on it because mm. of what happened so, on the cross, yeah. the death, and the resurrection of Christ. It is sealed. The new covenant is sealed guaranteed with the precious blood of Jesus. So as we study the Word of God, and you may see like all these papers and notes and <laughs> books and Bibles open here, yeah. you can tell we're not really just trying to be uh, pretty, you know, for a, a pretty TV program or something. We're really studying the Word, so we've got notes and books and notebooks everywhere, and we enjoy studying the Word of God. So uh, if you're just tuning in for today, then the, all week long, the last four days, uh, We've been studying identification with Christ. Last week was all on who you are in Christ. And so I uh, encourage you to go back and watch the previous ones on uh, YouTube or Instagram TV, or you can watch it on uh, Mark Hankins Ministries Facebook. So all that's available to you. Praise the Lord. We're excited about it. You know, Mark, while you were uh, talking about studying the Word, it reminded me of a hymn. You know, I love hymns because they uh, contain doctrinal truth. And I love this one. It says, uh, and I think it's a great attitude for our Bible school to have. Uh, more about Jesus, would I know? More of his grace to others show. More of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me. And then I like the second stanza to this old hymn. It says, more about Jesus, let me learn. More of his holy will discern. Spirit of God, my teacher be, showing the things of Christ to me. Oh, more about Jesus in his word holding communion with my Lord, hearing his voice in every line, making each faithful saying mine. Isn't that beautiful? Very more nice. more about Jesus, making each faithful saying mine, holding communion with his word, with the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. So I believe that today while we hear the word, open up your Bible, we're not just learning more head knowledge, but the Holy Spirit is speaking truth to each one of us. Well, and J James said, receiving with meekness the engrafted word. Yes. So the word mm -hmm. is not just intellectual. That word gets engrafted in us. And with meekness, <clears throat> what does that word meekness mean? It means <clears throat> teachable. Be uh, teachable. Don't say, oh, I've heard that before. Oh, I know that. You know, don't tell me that. I know that already. You know, it's a bad attitude. But mm -hmm. meekness, yeah. blessed are those who are meek yeah. in spirit. They shall receive more. Yeah, humble mm -hmm. yourself. Humble and God yourself. resists the proud, gives grace to the humble. Amen. So we humble ourselves before the word like we would humble ourselves before God. And how we receive the word will determine 
its effect upon our lives. Amen. So we receive it with meekness, we humble ourselves, and then Paul told the Thessalonians, you receive the word, not like a man was talking to you, but you received it like it is the very word of God. And he said, and that word works mightily and effectually in those who believe. Okay, There's some about just opening the word, right. studying the word, receiving the word that has the same power that is in God. It's the power of God. I know. You know, David had much to say about the word of God and how powerful it is when you meditate on it, you put it in your mouth and how it's his meditation day and night. Yeah. And I think <clears throat> these truths that we've been teaching this week, identification with Christ, if we'll give ourselves wholly to that topic, that we were crucified with Christ, yeah. we died with him, the old person we used to be is mm. dead and gone. Yeah. Hallelujah. We've been raised <clears throat> up with Christ, we reign with him. Yeah. Wow, how powerful those truths are. Wow, praise the Lord. And the way you receive the word will determine its effect upon you. And so one of the great keys for receiving the word appropriately or to receiving revelation knowledge is in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 6. Right. And that is when you receive the word, Galatians 6, 6, um, actually Paul's talking in Galatians 6 all about uh, a man's harvest in life is determined entirely by what he sows. So Galatians 6, 6 says, Yeah. You know what it says? <laughs> it says, don't receive it as just taught by man. Receive it uh, as it came from God, as it is in it is truth. I'm, I'm laughing. Why uh, are you laughing? I caught you by surprise. Oh, you did? I didn't know. I thought you, I was just waiting for you to finish. <laughs> I might have caught you by surprise, too, <laughs> and maybe somebody else. Okay. Uh, Galatians 6, 6 says. You're a little ornery today. <laughs> it was Friday, so I woke, I'm I think ready. you woke for Ornery Saturday, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. In Galatians chapter 6 and verse 6. Yep. says, Let him that is taught in the word Share communicate unto all. him that yes. teaches in all good things. In other words, he says the way you are blessed, if you've been taught in the word, the way you enjoy the good goodness of God and the blessing of the Lord. He said, you need to communicate to the one who has taught you in all those good things that you've been blessed with. Yeah. And so the Amplified Bible says, the one who is taught in the word of God is to share all good things with the teacher. So to me, Paul is not just saying that just because he's saying, well, you know, actually Paul says later, not that I desire a gift. He's just saying that there's something about the word that when you receive the word, he said, you have been instructed by God to give to those who have taught you the word. So one of the great keys to revelation knowledge or to how you receive the word is literally just giving or generosity. Mm -hmm. And so when you receive the word, he says, you're not just supposed to give somebody a hug, send them a card or put, you know, a comment or thank you. He said that you and I are to be a blessing back to the ones we have received the word from. And you say, well, how can I be a blessing? Uh, to the significance of how that word has been a blessing in your life, you should say, Lord, I want to be a blessing back for several reasons. Number one, I want my heart open for the word to have its greatest effect upon mm -hmm. me. And there's something about giving that reflects your heart right. and it affects your heart. It opens your heart. It opens mm -hmm. your heart. So you're giving. So you're saying, Lord, I thank you for that revelation. I thank you for that word. And Lord, I don't want it just to be information. I want it to be revelation. So I want to sow a seed and give where I have received that word from. And to me, it's been one of the greatest harvests I've ever received, not just financially, because your giving does not just affect you financially. Right? So look at Luke chapter 16 real quickly because you're going to see that your giving affects more than just your finances. And here's what Jesus said in Luke chapter 16. In Luke 16, uh, Jesus in verse 10, uh, he's talking about mammon and the things of this world or money or material things. And then he says in uh, Luke 16 verse 10, he said, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. He that's unjust in the least will be unjust in much. He said, if you have not been faithful with unrighteous mammon or with money, he said, who will commit to your trust 
true riches. And so he says, you be faithful in that which is another man. You cannot serve God money. So Jesus is really just talking about money in relation to your spiritual things. Right. Interesting. And so what he's saying is that when you and I are faithful in the area of our finances and the faithfulness uh, concerning our money and material things, he said, God will commit to your trust true riches. So really saying money's not really true riches. You didn't bring any in the world. You can't take any out. Right. So really true riches would be revelation, knowledge, the anointing, the will of God, the blessing of God upon your family, your children, your grandchildren. In other words, the Lord said to me one time, he said, if you will be a generous giver, I'll do things for you money could never do for you. So there's something about when you and I receive the word and those who have taught us the word. And so he said, well, don't receive the word and then say, well, I'm going to give it somewhere else. Somebody else needs it more. He said, no, where you receive that instruction is where you are to sow and to give. He said, because that is really going to unlock the revelation of the word of God. So the Lord said to me, you can steal information. You can never steal revelation. That means you can be a parrot and just repeat things. But for the word to become true revelation in your heart, for the anointing. I mean, I think about uh, uh, Kenneth Hagin Ministries and Dad Hagin and, and Kenneth Copeland Ministries and uh, um, a lot of ministries where we have received the word. Mm -hmm. And you and I, for the last 44 years, have been pretty serious sowers into those ministries. And we have noticed that we've received such revelation. And when we sow and give, it just brings not just the information, it actually opens our heart to receive the anointing. And so the Lord said to me one time, he said, your, your, your next spiritual breakthrough may be as connected to your giving as it is to your praying. That's interesting. Uh, very interesting, because he said, if you're faithful when it comes to this area of your finances, God said, I'll commit to you true riches. So um, this ministry and the things that we are sowing, the seed and the word, is literally going around the world. And so you can just say, Lord, I am so thankful for the revelation I've received, and I would like to sow a seed or I would like to give. And so your partnership with us, we are so thankful because it enables us to go forward yeah. and go faster yeah. and reach further and to grow in the word. This word, this revelation is literally changing a nation, changing a generation, the revelation of who you are and what you have in Christ. And so the great joy of giving and when you receive the word and we just say, Lord, thank you for Amen. that word. And then Jesus said, if you just give a cup of water to a prophet in the name of a prophet, you will receive a prophet's reward. What does that mean? It's He's just big. saying a prophet, a man of God, a servant of God, a man mm -hmm. or a prophet, someone bringing you the word. He said, whatever you give, even if it's something as little as, as, as they're thirsty, they need a drink of water, you give them a cup of water. He said, you will receive the prophet's reward. What is that? Aha. Uh -huh. Well, I heard Dad Hagen say this years ago. And um, the prophet's reward, he said, is a word in season. Because that that's means, a prophetic gift. Yeah, that's the gift of God that is unlocked, that there's something about giving and serving and being a blessing to that ministry that opens up that word in due season for your life. And so right now, I'm just telling you, as you sow a seed and as you give, and you're just saying, thank you for that word. Amen. I believe God opens up a word in due season when you're facing a challenge in your life that God will do things for you, not only financially, but he'll do things for you spiritually and you'll go forward and have a breakthrough in your spiritual life and the will of God for your life and the divine destiny God has for your life. You know, when you're talking about this, it makes me think of the Philippians church in, in mm -hmm. chapter four. You know, they contributed not just one time, but again and again. Yeah. And they formed a debit and credit account. Yeah, the Amplified Bible says uh, verses uh, chapter 4, verse Philippians 15 chapter four. through 19. Sometimes we take that promise in uh, verse 19, and my God shall supply all you need yeah. according to his riches and glory 
but it is it needs to be attached to yeah. the requirement of being a good partner. Yeah, being a partner. Paul said, you are a partner. So, uh, you know, you hear a lot of people, boy, and they say, well, I got that sermon, and, and they'll use the quotes, and they'll even forget where they got the quotes from. You know? <laughs> they'll just say, oh, yeah, you know. And so they get it, and they like go. Like I right always up. said. But he said, uh, like I always say, when really the Lord used a teacher, the Lord used a prophet, the Lord used somebody to bring you that word and that breakthrough in Revelation. And, and you say, well, how much should I give? Uh, according to the measure of your ability and the measure of the significance yeah. of that revelation upon your life. What will that do? To me, it is, is, is as important as you paying attention. You know what? That's somebody true. teaching, preaching the word, and you're like, all right, I'm paying attention. Well, it's good to pay attention, really need to pay attention. But Galatians 6, 6, he said, don't just pay attention. He said, you've received the word and you give, and that's going to bring a breakthrough in your life spiritually. So go back to Galatians 6, 6, and he says, let the one who is taught in the word. And so when you receive the word, you can say, I have really been taught the word. Now, it's my job to communicate or share all good things where I receive that word from. That's right. Where I receive that revelation from. And so when you do that, uh, that was a big breakthrough in our lives because we've got a lot of teaching from different ministries, but the ones that the, were the most significant in our lives, we became very generous in giving, and we found out more than just uh, financial blessing, but anointing and the reward of a prophet and the reward of the word coming to us in due season literally saved our lives. It really did. Wow. There was turning points in our lives, you know, where you just hit a wall, and then we'd go to hear that word yeah. from the prophet. We'd hear that word. Yeah. We would reciprocate with we would giving. Sow. Yeah. We would sow, and God would give us just a word in season, and we'd go so, forward. <clears throat> Today, we years still, later. We <laughs> still remember those words. <clears throat> uh, so I love and Isaiah 32, 8. Yeah. In Isaiah 32, 8, it says, uh, uses in the King James, it uses the word liberal. You're right. But it says, uh, we'll, we'll uh, put the word generous in there. <laughs> uh, but the word generous, he said, the generous person devises generous things, or a generous person plans to be generous. Right. And by his generosity, he shall stand. That is interesting. So common. he's saying you're giving and your generosity that you plan to be generous and it was your generosity that enabled you to stand when other people would have fallen and other right. people would have failed or collapsed. Mm -hmm. You're still standing because there's something about generosity that opens your heart and there's something about it that God loves. God just loves. I mean, you, you say, well, I thought God loved everybody. Well, we certainly believe he loves everybody, but 2 Corinthians chapter 9, in verse 6, mm -hmm. he says, if you sow or you give, he said, if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. He said, if you sow generously, you're going to reap generously. So he says, you alone are in charge of your harvest. Right. But the next verse says what? He says, God is able. let everyone, everyone give. give. As he purposes in his heart. So there's, there's a heart thing wow. right there. So your heart's involved. So God doesn't just want your hand involved. Right. He says your heart's involved. And I believe it's really the supernatural reaction. When you hear the word, receive the word, that you want to give. Your heart wants to give. And, you, and the Bible like says God will give seed to the sower. That means when you want to be a giver mm -hmm. and you practice giving, the Lord said if you'll get addicted to giving. He said, I will support your habit. So there's something about <laughs> I love that, that sowing that God said, I will finance your giving because you're generous. So he says, Ooh. amen. So he says, the Lord loves a cheerful, hilarious, prompt to do it. Ah, prompt to do it. What does that mean? What the Lord put in your heart as you receive the word, be prompt to do it. Just say, okay, right now I'm going to sow that seed. Right now I'm going to give, and I'm going to sow a seed because I've received the word. That's a right. prompt to do it giver whose heart is in his giving. So the Lord, you said, well, he loves everybody, but there's something about a cheerful, generous, prompt to do it giver. It's so godly. 
God is that way. God loves it. Oh, yes. He loves it. He doesn't hold back a thing. Yeah. He says, I'll give you this and that. All right, now, and the next verse is verse Mm -hmm. uh, 8. You want to say that one. And (laughs) And God God is able to make all grace abound unto you, that you always, in all situations, may have all sufficiency. Bunch of all. A lot of all there. (laughs) To give to every good work. Woo, that's generous. God is able to make all all grace. grace. The Amplified says, every favor and earthly blessing come to you in In abundance abundance. so you have all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. So he's not saying you're just going to have all this and all that and you're just going to sit around with all your stuff. No, he said he's going to bless you so much that you'll be able to abound and be so generous in your giving to the preaching of the gospel of Christ. You know, while you're saying that, you know, I've heard uh, people say there's a blessing coming by you all the time. There's a blessing just coming by. Yeah. The way to get that blessing is to sow. Mm-hmm. The moment you sow, because of the word you've heard, that blessing stops and comes to your address. Yeah. <laughs> there is a blessing coming. And today I believe God's speaking to us. Second he's saying, Corinthians he's saying they, I want that blessing to come to you. And really... He's talking about your seed, and he's calling your giving, sowing. And so when he talks about sowing, the Lord said to me, your sowing or your giving, your seed has a return address on it. That's good. Uh So that means you don't have to worry about giving and your harvest not making it back to your address. No, he said your seed has a return address on it. And it is labeled either sparing or generous. Mm -hmm. And literally, uh, when you are sowing, God said, I'm guaranteeing the harvest will come back to you. It's a law of sowing and reaping. Just like I know a lot of people have been planting their gardens this year. Whatever they want to come up in the garden is what they put in. And they water it. And they expect it, and it does. It comes up. And there's actually, this is a spiritual law that accesses grace. Because people say, well, I'm not under the law. I'm under grace. Well, here he (laughs) says, this law of sowing and reaping is what enables God to make all grace abound towards you. So there is a spiritual law that accesses grace. Amen. And we need grace. Yeah. Grace is God's (coughs) favor, his ability, God's opening doors, closing doors. He's fighting our battles. That's the grace of God. It's more than just, you know, I'm going to put in this amount of money in the offering and I'm going to get it out. No, you get the grace of God. It's unlimited. It overflows wave after wave of the grace of God comes in our lives. Amen. And so the way you receive the word. So Paul told the Philippians in Philippians chapter 4, And verse 19, my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory. But if you read verse 15, 16, Mm -hmm. 17, and 18. Right. Wow, what's he saying in those verses? He's saying you Philippians, because Paul had brought the gospel. He had given them spiritual things. There's something about when you receive the word, And Paul was their teacher or their minister. He had given them the word. And he said, you Philippians, he said, um, when I departed from Macedonia, he said, no other church communicated. So here's the word communicate again. What does that mean? He's not talking about like Galatians 6, 6. He's not talking about, well, just send him a letter. He said concerning giving and receiving. So communication, communication has to do with finance. He's talking about your finances. Okay. In other words, he says you received the gospel and you uh, didn't cut off where you received the gospel from. So a lot of times people say they'll get a revelation of the word and they'll just run off and say, I got that. I don't have to listen to that guy no more. I don't know about that because God alone's in charge of revelation. And so God unlocks revelation. And when you're obedient to the word of God concerning giving, it actually helps all the word to open up to you. That's incredible. Yeah. So if you give uh, in response to one thing in the word of God, revelation is imparted 
and then more It affects the way you receive the word in every area of your life. Mm -hmm. And so he says, you Philippians gave and concerning giving and receiving. So he said, really, your giving is affecting your receiving. You're giving and you're receiving. You're giving or you receive the word and you're giving and now your giving is affecting your receiving. So a lot of times people think, well, he's talking about giving right now. No, I'm really talking about giving and receiving. Yeah. And so people say, we're talking about giving. No, really, we're talking about receiving. Right. And so there's something about, he calls it giving and receiving connected here. And then he says, for you gave once and then you gave again. So a lot of times people say, well, I already gave once. He said, you gave once and then you kept giving, Paul said, until I had more than enough. And look at verse 17. He says, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Wow, did you know you have an account? And so Paul says, when you're giving, you become a partner with everything Paul is doing and preaching the gospel, and you don't have to get beaten up, and you don't have to travel with him and go through a shipwreck. But when you give, he says, you became a partner with me, and he said, and now the fruit abounds to your account. So this is an investment because of the word we hear. We want to invest back into the kingdom and the place where it came from. It's your best. It's an eternal it's investment. Your, yes. And it don't go up and down like the stock market. <laughs> no. It's an eternal investment and it will not depreciate. And so when you're giving into the gospel, it affects eternal things the lives of people eternally. So he says, in this investment, the Lord said to me one time, he said, your sowing will always outperform your savings. That's really good. In other words, nothing wrong with that, being blessed, having savings accounts. He just said, but your sowing will always do more in your life than your savings will ever do. So actually, the kingdom of God you know, Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. And he was talking in relation to our needs and everything that we'd have need, our house, our food, our clothes, everything we have need of will be supplied. Mm. So uh, as we're giving, responding to the word of God that comes through ministers, mm -hmm. the word, we respond financially, then we are doing that. We're seeking first the kingdom of God yeah. and we're putting our money investing our money yeah. into that place where we heard the word of God and Jesus promised wow. everything we have need mm. of will be added. And, and really, uh, unless there's teaching on this subject, then we will not understand the significance and the importance of how we give, how we sow, and the effect of our sowing upon our destiny, our life, and other people's lives. And so Dad mm -hmm. Hagen yeah. pastored for 12 years, but there was one church he had to go back and pastor again. Why was that? Well, he said the Lord told him, one of the things the Lord told him was you did not teach them about tithing, sowing, and giving. He said, because you were afraid that they would criticize you for talking about money. I think there's a lot of pastors like that. They were They're just afraid. afraid. Like, oh, I don't what want people, people to think it's think? about money. Well, Jesus said, unless you're faithful when it comes to money. Okay. He said, God will not commit to you true riches. And so no question that salvation is free. Somebody said, you know, salvation is free and it's absolutely free. Jesus mm -hmm. paid for it. And so you can receive it, Jesus. Receiving him won't cost you nothing. But if you're going to follow Jesus... It's going to cost you something to follow Jesus. In other words, laying your life down right. and being obedient to his word. And so there's something about giving that Jesus actually stood by the offering and watched people's giving. He's, he's more concerned about the giving part of the service well, than the music, I, I, I just, think. <laughs> like in our churches, we all, oh, that's beautiful singing, that praise worship, all oh, mine, and the band, and the sound, and the, and the big screen TVs, and all that stuff is, oh, man, that's amazing. Giving and the attitude of generosity is like your temperature. Yeah. If somebody's sick, their temperature is going to go up, and if you are stingy, you know, you want to yeah. hold tight, you have a temperature. <laughs> yeah, that's something wrong with you. So there's something about, I always say, people something say, well, I'm, wrong. Uh, there's something about people, we look at the beautiful church buildings, right. 
And thank God for beautiful buildings. Thank God we're, we're able to do those things to facilitate the work. And so, um, but Jesus never commented on how beautiful the temple was, how the beautiful it was. Actually, he said, tear it down, I'll rebuild it in three days. So he was not impressed with the building. He was not impressed with the people singing. He was not impressed. It just said, he just watched the giving. Woo, because he knew the people. He, he knew what, the what they giving. had at home. Not only did he watch the giving, but he made comments about the giving. Boy, that's bold. Wow. <laughs> so, so, and then actually, uh, as they were giving, he noticed who were the most generous people and the biggest givers are the most generous givers. And he actually said, we're going to talk about the most generous ones because it's not necessarily who gives the most that's the most generous. It's true. It's in proportion to your ability. You can be generous no matter whether you think you're rich or poor. You can, in proportion to your ability, you could be more generous than somebody who has more than you. That's true. It makes me think of, uh, reminds me of a story about Yonggi Cho, and he was building his building, mm. his church building, and the project came to a halt because there were no finances. And he yeah. was, you know, he was very despondent and discouraged. And this little widow lady came and she brought her rice bowl. That's yeah. all she had. Yeah. And she gave that rice bowl. Well, that mm -hmm. act of giving, you know, that wasn't a lot in comparison to he what actually, he needed. Uh, they, were, they were in a depression, the right. economy in Korea. And he actually said, Sister, I don't, we, that will not help us in this ministry or this building. We, that won't help us. But she said, I want to give it. You have to let me give it. So and her heart was so she open. She was. All she had was a rice bowl. She gave everything. And it, all that meant, he said, was wow. from then on, she would have to eat off of newspapers. Mm -hmm. When she brought the rice bowl and said, I want to give her generosity. And so the others who had stopped giving because the economy was shaken, and so they kind of held back. They weren't going to give because, well, I got to wait and see what the economy is going to do before I give anymore. Right. Rich business people. The rich people business guys, the they stopped all their giving because they the economy was tight. shaken. And so when she gave the rice bowl, the businessmen were like, I'll give you $10,000 for that rice bowl. And then, then others started giving, and it opened up, and he finished the church and finished the ministry. In other words, your generosity wow. literally sets you free from the fear of the economy, the fear of lack, and the control of mammon. And when you're sowing into the gospel, Paul said to the Philippians, you gave once, you gave again. And then he said, and your giving literally came up before God like a sweet savor are like the incense of worship. So he says, your giving is not just a financial thing. He said, your generosity, you gave once, you gave again, and your giving came all the way up. In other words, God was paying attention. And God saw their generosity. Their giving was like worship. Mm -hmm. And so if giving is like worship, then why should you make a uh, make minimal time concerning giving, and yet spend an hour singing? <laughs> Are y'all still here? When you got like um, two thousand scriptures on finances and relation because it's so connected to your heart, he said your giving came up like worship mm -hmm. before God. In other words, you got God's attention. Right. Oh, who else got God's attention with their giving? Acts chapter ten. Such a beautiful story. And Carneas changed a whole and Carneus family. Carneas loved God. Yes. Uh, but he, his, his knowledge of God was so limited. Think about that. He loved God, but his knowledge was limited. And so yet, just loving God, he was such a generous giver. He prayed, but he also gave so generously that the scripture says his giving came up before God for a memorial. So he gave like Philippians 4, 18 talks about. He gave just like that. It was sweet to God. This is not just New Testament. This is Old and New yes. Testament where David's giving in 1 Chronicles 29. I prepared and it came right up before God. He smells it. Wrote a whole chapter about it. It's sweet. For the worship and it yes. set people free and they're rejoicing. And so what happened when Cornelius was giving came up before God and it says this, God sent angels 
And then he sent Peter to Cornelius' house. And Cornelius heard the gospel from the apostle Peter and his whole family was filled with the Holy Spirit. So this act of giving that Cornelius involved, involved himself with, in fact, it says he wanted to build the church, uh, the synagogue there for yeah, the Christians. To worship. To worship. And um, that activated angels. The Holy Spirit started moving, but the purpose was for the gospel to be preached, yeah. for the people there mm -hmm. to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Cornelius' whole family get born again. And think about it's it. It's a He's, huge purpose. He gave financially, and his giving literally translated into a spiritual breakthrough. You know, Mark, while we're sitting here, and I'm looking at all these photos around us, you know, I see Papua New Guinea, I see Nagaland, India, I see Vietnam behind you, I see Nigeria, I see some more of India, see I see Brazil, Kenya, Cuba, Vietnam, Vietnam. Um, Nepal, Nepal, Mexico, yeah. many, many people from around the world. Yes. You know, we couldn't have gotten there without people that gave yeah. and that partnered together with us yes. to send the word. And even today, the word is being sent there. Yeah, it's not just what we're doing. Every partner with Mark Hankins Ministries, every partner with what we're doing, he said it, something happens in your account. And so oh. this is an eternal thing. Yes. And so he says, now when uh, Carneas is giving, and his whole family was filled with the Holy Spirit. So the Lord said to me, if you will be a generous giver, I will do things for you that money could never do for you. Wow. In other words, your generosity opens up the supernatural. He even said in Malachi, your tithes, your offerings, when you're given, yes. he said, I will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing you don't have room enough to receive. <laughs> so our act of faith and giving, what it, it's really precious to us, you know, people's finances, that's mine, you know. Yeah. Don't touch my and money, my, my you know. <laughs> when you open your heart and then you, you're generous, Wow, it just opens so much of God towards us. His wow. eyes are looking throughout the whole world to see wow. who he can show himself strong to. Wow. And I believe the generous giver gets God's attention. Well, Quick. not only will he uh, multiply your seed sown, but he will make all grace abound Amen. towards you. And so to take your sowing and your giving, to take it seriously, especially when you're receiving the word. When you're receiving the word, you say, Lord, that word changed my life. I want to give so I can say thank you, Lord, for that word. And thank you to whoever's been carrying it for 20, 30, 40 right. years and actually got it available where you could receive it. But also to say thank you, Lord, I want to help somebody else get the same word. I want them to help it get it in different nations and different languages. So I'm sowing, I'm giving, and I thank you, Lord, that, that my account, this is affecting my eternal account. Amen. You know, all my life we were raised in a missions church. My dad, yes. my mom have such a heart for missions. And even today, still preaching around the world via satellite or via, you know, that Facebook yeah. and yeah. everything involved in raising up churches in Nepal, India, throughout mm -hmm. the world. And that got in our hearts as kids. Yeah. And so we were always involved in missions giving. Mm -hmm. I remember we bought a truck uh, for the Navajos when we were teenagers. Oh. Yes. And today we go to that same place we go and to God has opened New the Mexico. door. Yeah. And so it's something that's inborn inside of us. If you are a body of Christ, if you are born again, yeah. you can't help but give. Pastor George you, Ford yes. and uh, Farmington, New Mexico and ministering to the Navajo, Navajo. Nation. Yeah. And, but you can see a seed you sowed 
And now that ministry is still growing and multiplied yes. in the Navajo Nation. And so there's something about in the book of Proverbs, it says a gift is like a precious stone that whichever way you turn it, it will prosper. In other words, if you right. took a diamond or a precious stone and it has many different cuts or facets, he's saying your giving has many different facets and effects and it's uh, affects every way you turn it, it will affect and bring a change. And so there's something about generosity. You know, even in uh, my, my own watch, sometimes people see my watch, you know, I have a, a, a nice Rolex watch. And so sometimes people say, well, how come that preacher got a Rolex watch? Well, actually my dad pastored in a little town in Texas for almost 50 years. And so uh, one day the Lord impressed upon me, he said, how would you like to just buy your dad a Rolex? I said, wow, you know, this is not a good time for that. You know, uh, I don't have a lot of finances right now to do that. He said, well, your dad, you know, he's been pastoring all these years. He's never had anything but a Timex, a cheap watch. So I brought my dad into town, let him pick out a Rolex watch. Well, I got this Rolex watch, and then uh, Pastor David Sheeran put some diamonds on it. Jesse Duplantis put some diamonds on it. Mom gave it to my dad. And uh, he was my so dad, blessed. oh, that's the most <laughs> nicest thing he'd ever had. Yeah. And he'd praise God different with his watches that praise the <laughs> Lord. And if people tried to criticize him because he had a Rolex, he'd say, my son bought it for me. Well, not too long after that, my dad went home to be with the Lord. Yeah. And so my mom said, well, I get the watch back. In other words, I gave him a Rolex watch. You gave him your best. Just because, and it took me a year to pay for it. I made <laughs> payments for one year. Right. But I thought that's, that's something precious and valuable. Remember the woman who poured the precious uh, ointment, oil, right. perfume on Jesus? Mm -hmm. Wow. And that story, everywhere the gospel is preached, you have to talk about that woman. Yeah. Because she poured that precious ointment on Jesus. And the disciples actually criticized her. Actually, Judas was the one criticizing her. Because he, he said, thief. that's a waste. That's way too extravagant. And you wasted it. So someone said the value of that perfume was like a year's salary. Mm -hmm. And she broke it open and poured it on Jesus. And the disciples rebuked her. And Jesus said, leave her alone. She has prepared me for my burial. In other words, this woman's generosity poured out on Jesus, prepared him for the greatest mission in all of the human race, for Jesus to go to the cross and her generosity, giving, it cost her something, was so precious that Jesus, while he was on the way to the cross and people were cursing him, pulling out his hair, spitting on him, he could still smell the aroma of someone who loved him. That means there's something about generosity that can propel a ministry into the next part of their destiny for their life. And there's something about you and I being generous that actually connects more to, than just to finances. Thank God that God takes care of us in grand style right. and we are blessed, but there's something about generosity. Actually, Dad Hagen said, someone asked him, said, if you were looking for a leader in your ministry, what would be the number one characteristic you'd look for? He said, generous. generous. He said, because someone who is not generous will shut down the move of the Spirit of God in their life. That's the truth. Or in the church, in the mm -hmm. ministry, mm -hmm. and in their life. And I've seen that often in, in different churches. Wow, isn't that amazing? Somebody just opposes the move of God in the church because they want to be stingy. And they're also kind of stingy too. Mm -hmm. So there's something about generosity that has a, a spiritual effect. I like what Anne Frank said, that she said, no one ever became poor by giving. It's interesting. That's <laughs> true. No one ever ended in debt, ended up in debt because of giving. Now you might be spending, like a lot of people say, well, I'm real frugal. I say, well, frugal might be good at Walmart, but it is not good in the kingdom of God. You're just stingy. Yeah. And, but there's something about generosity, whether you think you're rich or you're poor. The Corinthians, Paul said, um, you, were, 
you are struggling financially and yet your generosity and such joy. And he said, now I'm going to tell you something that Jesus became poor. So you'll never be poor another day the rest of your life. Praise God. And that broke them yes, free. Yes. And then they go to 2 Corinthians 8, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Mm -hmm. And God makes all grace, grace and that you're him. enriched in every area of your life. And he said, and you're giving. 2 Corinthians That's chapter good. 9 I like is going to cause many to give good great grace. Praise and thanksgiving to God. Think about yes. that. When you're tithing, when you're sowing, when you're giving, when you've heard the word and you say, I want to give, I want to sow a seed. He said, your giving is going to cause many to start praising God. How is that <laughs> going to happen? In other words, your giving is going to be such a blessing to people around the world. There's going to be a voice of thanksgiving going to come up before God. So there again, you see, your yes. giving has affected more than just your personal finance. It's an eternal thing. Yeah, praise the Lord. Praise God. You know, I, sometimes I'm with the kids a lot, and they say, well, I want to get this, and I want to get that. And I think about the money we put into those temporary things. Yeah. And um, again, I go back to our childhood, how we contributed to oh. different missions, yeah. um, efforts, even as children. So I believe generosity is not relegated to people mm. that grow up. From a child, we can be generous and give. Yeah. And uh, so that's something in t eternal. Mm. Old, you know, shoes wear out. We lose things that we buy. You know, and they go out of junk. date, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> worthless. It's, they're worthless. And you brought none in the world, can't take you any can't out. Can't take it out. That's right. right. And so there's something about that generosity. Now look at Proverbs 11, 24 and 25. And here's what Proverbs 11, 24 and 25 says. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Wow, man, this is a good one. So you got to read this because Proverbs, we know Proverbs 3, 9 and 10, honor the Lord with your substance and the first fruits of all of your increase. So shall your barns be filled with plenty and your presses shall burst out with new wine. Amen. I believe that last phrase is in reference to spiritual blessing. In other words, while you honor the Lord with your substance, your finances, the first fruits of all of your increase, your income, and you just say, Lord, thank you for your goodness, and you honor him through giving, he said your barns will be filled. That's right. So the Lord said to me, I did not design giving for you to decrease. He said, I actually designed giving for you to increase. All right, let's go now. Go to Proverbs 11, 24 and 25. Yeah, you had to stop off in Malachi. <laughs> ah, increase. Increase. Yeah. All right. Proverbs eleven twenty four. There is that scattereth and yet increases, and there is that withholdeth more than is meat, but it tends to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. Oh, Explain. Man. Wow. <laughs> I love it. Proverbs eleven so twenty four. There is that scatters. And increases. Increases. All right, here's the other translation. One gives away and gets richer. One keeps what he should give and is poorer. I thought, now what does that mean? Because you'd think if you held on to your money, you'd have more money. He said, but if you hold on to your money too tight, you actually have less money. Mm -hmm. So sometimes lack does not come from money you don't have. It comes from money that you do have that you shouldn't have. Right. In other words, you spent that money. You ate your seed. You spent it, and you, or you held on to it you just, just for it. yourself yeah. and your purposes. He said, but there's something about giving that there is one in the Proverbs, the wisdom of God. He says, one who gives away and increases. And one who holds on to their money too tight, and they actually have less. Yep. And he says, and the generous person shall be watered, because while you're watering others, in other words, God said, while you're giving, I'm going to make sure you are receiving every word, strength that you need, anointing and grace that you need right in the right time. This whole uh, verse reminds me of Scrooge, you know. <laughs> Yeah, you hear that story at Christmas time and how he just counted his money and he was so sad, grouchy, and mean. He wasn't going to spread it out. But we don't want to be like that. There's one that holds on. Yeah. 
and he has less, but those that are generous, guess what? We are planting some new fields, and we believe there is multiplied yeah. harvest coming back. Yes, amen. We shall be watered. And so you, you, your generosity, that means uh, you, don't, you don't have to be like the smartest, the most talented. Right. But you can be generous in your giving week after week, month after month, year after year. And he says it will bring increase. Not only will it bring increase financially, he said, but there will come breakthroughs in your life spiritually. So as we get the word of God out and act on the word, we started off talking about this. We weren't planning on spending the whole session on it, but we started off talking must about need it. how you receive the word. So he's saying this, I have a minister friend who's very, very successful. And he said, one, a lady came up to him and said, I have um, received so much from your teaching year after year. And she said, and you know, and I've never given you anything. And he <laughs> said, so I said, just in my response, um, well, that's okay, sister. That's okay. I'm, I'm doing fine. He said, then the Lord corrected him and said, don't tell her that's okay, because that is not okay. The Lord said that. He said, the Lord said that is not okay. In other words, he didn't say you're some exception, no. that you've received the word year after year, and it's become such a blessing in your life, and you've never given anything, mm -hmm. or you've given such a small amount that the ministry wouldn't even be available today. In other words, according to your ability, and if you've received the word year after year, then you just say, I'm, I'm a giver, I'm a partner with that ministry, and ministries that you and I have been partners with every month for 40 years. I'm a partner with that ministry. <laughs> I take it serious. That means every month I'm sowing and other ministries that we're sowing into. Right. And so we've seen nothing but increase, 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 not just financially, but in the revelation of the will of God and the word of God in our lives. And God has opened doors that were closed. They, we would never walk through. Yeah. But as we give and we're generous, and you know, yeah. you, you'll give out of different accounts, you'll give out of, you'll, you'll give a truck, you'll do this and that, and God has opened all kinds of doors. Well, we, we just gave a missionary a, a very nice truck, but we enjoyed doing it, and they were thrilled, but uh, I said, I'm really thrilled too, because you, you get the truck as a blessing to you, but God is able to make all grace, mm -hmm. and that makes me a partner, so that means something supernatural happens when you give. And so we weren't spend, uh, planning on spending the whole time doing this, but let me tell you this, the free book this did I say free book the free book is <laughs> markhankins.org the power of your identification with Christ and think about it if Christ lives in you if he gave That's his right. whole life for God so loved the world that he gave and that kind of love is inside of us if you're identified Amen. with Christ you got to be a giver you got to be you a giver you got Christ living in you you're a giver you're actually thinking about all the time i want to give i want to sow i want to be a blessing in my generation yes. and my dad one of his favorite scriptures was acts 13:36 and it says that david served his generation according to the will of god and then he died or he uh, uh, says he fell asleep, but he passed away. Yeah. In other words, we serve our generation with the gospel, with the word, with our giving, with our serving. And so uh, we want you to get the book. It's absolutely, absolutely free. Go to markhankins.org. And you've heard the word today and you've heard it all week in the last four or five weeks. Thank you for being a partner with us. Thank you so much. All of the partners with our ministry are the ones that enable us just to keep going forward into new territories. Thank you so much for being a partner with us. Thank you, and God bless you abundantly. And also, if you have not given, you say, I'd like to sow a seed today, then there's a place where you can text to give right there uh, online. You can also call our office, say, I'd like to give an offering today, 318-767-2001, or you can just uh, mail a check to Mark Hagen. Ministry, P.O. Box 12863, Alexander, Louisiana, 71315. That's right there on the screen. And so we appreciate your giving, but more than us saying thank you for your giving, God says, because you've been faithful right. in this area financially, he said, I will commit to your trust, trust. revelation, and the yes. will of God and the yes. plan of God. In other words, you receive the word and you've been taught the word and you say, I want to give. Now that word is changing your life forever. 
You'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Now, next week, we'll be on again, live stream in Christ International Bible School. But Monday is Memorial Day, so we're not going to be on Monday morning, but we'll be on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday next week. So not we're not on Monday, but get back with us on Monday, and we're going to, uh, on Sun, uh, on Tuesday. Tuesday. Whatever we'll be day ready to up. roll on Whatever Tuesday. Day comes after Monday. It'll be, thank God it's Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, and so you have a wonderful weekend. Declare your identification with Christ, who you are in Him, and your confession of faith, and also your sowing makes an eternal difference in your life. And so get the free book, Identification with Christ. We're happy to give it to you. So until Tuesday morning, may God richly bless you and Jesus, Jesus. is